show you today how we can do some simulation in population mode. So I've created a population model in advance of this, and here is my model, and I've got a good fit, and I'm satisfied with the quality of the model, got good parameter estimates, good CVs, and the random effects look pretty reasonable in terms of the results there too. So um, a good population fit. Now I want to use this model to do a simulation. How can I do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to need to do, I have created a worksheet here, which I'm going to use as the basis of my simulation. And in here, I'm going to simulate two different dose groups. I'm going to simulate a five milligram dose and a 10 milligram dose, both given at time zero. And I have the dose entered here in micrograms so that my units work out right, which is the units that were used in the original model. I've also included a blank CIOBS column with units on it to specify what the units of CIOBS are, even though there is no observed concentration here. I've just left it blank. That will eliminate a warning in the model, and it will also give us the correct units. Okay, so I've already created my model. So I'm going to take this model and I'm just going to make a copy of it and I'm going to paste it in to the project. And I will rename this one simulation. The model, instead of using the observations, I'm going to use the simulated data and I can just drag that over here and drop it into the panel here. Now it's based on the sim data. I use the same column name, so they're already mapped. ID, AA is my dose amount, time, and COBS. And again, COBS is blank, but that will eliminate the warning. Okay, not necessary, but it's helpful. All right, now I have the model copied and the model parameters are in this because it was from a model fit. So I'm going to go to the parameters tab and the fixed effects. And you can see here were the, the values I had in the model fit, and here were my initial estimates. Well, I'm going to press this accept all fixed and random button so that I will copy all of those over here. That will, affect, that will copy the fixed effects. And if you go over to the random effects tab, it will also copy all of these random effects in. So when you make a population model, you are specifying how much variability there is within the population. And then when we do a simulation, it will simulate a population based on these estimates here. The third thing that it will copy over can be found back on the structure tab, and that is the residual error. And this is important that if we want to do a simulation that includes residual error, we can do that as well. And I'll show you a couple of things we can do. All right, so I've set it up now. I've accepted my parameters. Now it's just a matter of going to the run options and putting it in simulation mode. And again, I have here the population mode button turned on all the time. So this is all in population mode. If you've been doing things in individual, you may notice that these dialogues are a little bit different. Now in a population simulation, what we do is we generate a population of individuals. And let me just do 10 replicates. So I'm going to generate a population of 10 subjects, which will have the random effects that were back here on the random effects tab. It will generate them with different values of eta for volume clearance and Ka. And then in the model, uh, as given by, if I go to the structural sub tab, it will use that eta value and the typical value to generate Ka, V, and Cl for each subject. So, now, how do we do it? Well, in a population simulation, we have to do it through simulation tables. So I'm gonna create two different simulation tables. So the first one uh, will be a rich time point. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use for the times, I want all times from zero to 24 in half hour increments. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm going to use the sequence function from time zero to time 24. So zero comma 24 comma 0 0.5. Okay, so that, and I'll close the parentheses. That means it's going to gen generate times from zero to 24 in 0.5 hour increments. I don't have any covariates, so I can skip that. I do have a dose. So I'll put the name of the dose point, which is AA shown here that you can see from the model diagram. 
And then I'm not going to simulate observations here. I'm going to report the value of the simulated concentration. So the concentration in the central compartment, which is called C. Make sure you use the same case. This is an uppercase C, so I need to do that. Okay, so that's one spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and run this and we'll see what we get from the simulation. Let me just take a second to run here. Simulations are pretty quick. And it's done. Okay, so there will be on your output, let's expand this a little bit, something called simulation table 01. And it's going to have what you requested. It'll have replicates and those will go, because I said 10, those will be from zero to nine. Let's scroll down to the bottom there, zero to nine. It'll have the dose groups that I put in as IDs. Uh, and those are just labels. So I know which ones were 10 and which one was for five. And then I've got times every half hour up to 24 hours. Uh, the doses were given at time zero and then the concentrations. And again, this is the predicted concentration. So if I make a plot of that, so if I go to plotting X, Y plot, and I just look at time, concentration, let's put the ID, this is the dose groups on different columns and group by replicate. What will we see? We'll have our two different dose groups and the concentrations. Um, and because these are very rich curves, I probably don't need to show the markers. So I'll take those away. And I'm also going to take away the group by line. So it just shows them as solid lines. Okay, so here I have my simulated curves then for five milligram and 10 milligram doses. Now these are these are the, the simulated concentrations. There's no noise in this. It's perfectly smooth lines. But uh, let's say that I wanted to see, well, what is it, what is this experimental data going to really look like? What would it look like if I did observations? So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm not really, I don't want the, the observed concentration at these rich time points. Most likely if I'm observing concentrations, I'm gonna do them at different times. So I'm gonna add a second SIM table. So now you see I have the SIM table zero two, and I'm going to put in just the times that I want. So let's say we were gonna do this kind of sampling where we're, we're doing one, two, four, eight, 16 and 24 hours. I'm just putting in as, as a comma separated list with the actual times that we would measure. And I can do things like put the dose in there. I don't put the observation here because there are no observations in this it's a simulation, but I can put C obs here in the variables. And what will happen is that, remember I've got this uh, observation here. And if we look at the structure tab, we can see what the residual error is here. What it's going to do is it's going to generate noise based on concentration. It will generate noisy data here, which we can then just report as a value C obs. So here I'll get C obs at these times. Let's go ahead and run this and see what that table looks like. Again, just take a moment to run it, a few seconds. And in progress, finally got through the overhead of setting up the job. It's running it, it's done. Okay, so now simulation table one is the same as it was before. Simulation table two now has those observed times. And so this is the, the C plus some noise. And let me go ahead and make a plot out of that. So I'm going to plot the same things I did before time, but now I'm going to put C obs on the Y. Um, I'm going to put the different IDs on columns and group by replicate. Okay, so once again, now here I'll keep the lines and, and the, and here we can see now we have our, our simulation now has added noise on it. So this is what we might expect to see in the data with the, the kind of noise level that we had in our residual error. 
So now we can actually make a simulation of what we would expect to see, including the added noise. So this first plot was what we would expect to see. I got to rerun it. If there was no noise, these are the, the sort of the perfect curves. And then the second one has the added noise. So by reporting out C obs, we can actually get a prediction of what the data would look like a little bit better in our simulation. We have a better idea of given the noise level, what are we going to see? All right, so that's a quick idea of how to do simulations. Uh, just keep in mind uh, one other application of simulations. I've only done a single dose here, but another application is to do multiple dosing to steady state. That would be also be something we could have done in our simulation. Lots of things we could do there, but I did want to show you the basics of how to create a simulation from a model and how to, how to simulate both the smooth data that you get from the predicted concentration and the more noisy data that you would expect to see given the, uh, the obser observed error that you have when building the model. Okay, so that will do it for now. See you at another tip.